May I ask what was the reason you you asked for the free Quran or? Uh, just just out of interest. I like okay. To, yeah. Have you read it? Before? I've read bits of it, but, but, but ages and ages and ages ago. I was okay. much younger. So I, um, I I spoke to you. So your background is agnostic atheist. Yeah. yeah you yeah. similar? Uh, yeah, similar. Similar. Okay. I would say I would say that I um, am so open that I don't want to ascribe myself to any uh, words. I'm just like, well, only, really developing and thinking. Yeah. So. Only you know what you are. We can't. We can't put a label to it. We can't put a label to it and we cannot describe it. So that's the reason we ask. So we know from what angle to approach the discussion from. Because um, we believe that all of us, we have, we, we know where we come from. For example, we know that we came from our parents and our, their parents came from them. You know, but ultimately we ask this question, this existential question, where did all of this come from? Yeah. All the matter, all the energy that you see in, in the universe, or in fact, where did the universe itself come from? So, I'm sure you guys must have thought about it. What is the most rational, coherent response I'm that guessing, you have got from I'm this? I'm guessing we're doing clam cosmological argument. Yeah. yeah so, what, what did you gather from that? Um, I know the argument. Um, How does it go? So, you can't have an infinite regressing. No, no, even before that. What is the first? Oh, so everything, what is the happens, first? everything happens has to have a cause. Yeah, so everything that exists yes. must have I a must cause. Have. Any, no, anything that begins to exist must have a cause. Not everything that exists. Okay. So anything that begins to exist. We know that the universe began to exist according to the scientific consensus, something like 13.8 billion years. Yes? yes? So it must have a cause. Now, what do you think that causes? Uh, I don't know. In your worldview, of course. I, I don't know. I, I think it's quite a big jump to go from uh, like a being to then like a personable, personal yeah. god. That's, that's but, so you think there's a being? Uh, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I think there yeah, might be. I don't think I can demonstrate if yeah. there is or isn't. So I don't. I think it's. I think it'd be quite arrogant to say there isn't because I can't right. say. I can't. Prove I mean, it. the reason the reason we say that there is an intelligent be being behind all this is because we actually see design in this universe, whether it's from the most microscopic thing to the entire universe itself. That, 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 I, do, that I do disagree with, though. Which part? I, I think just because something looks um, like designed. it's being designed, it, it, it doesn't necessarily... Okay, give me an example. I mean, I, well, that, I think, is, that you think is designed, but it's not really designed. Uh, I, I, think, I, think it's, I think it's positive evolution. Yeah. I Let me give you... I think it's almost a series of accidents. Even, even evolution. Take the DNA, for example. Right, sure. Do you, do you see design in DNA if you've done any studies? No. Even... even uh, high school level or your secondary level because when you talk about the DNA you're talking about something which is consistent in all human beings sure yes sure, sure. that's how you know the species sometimes even if it's completely like in an accident or something you'd be able to identify whether that's an animal or or a human being Correct. yes Correct. yeah so yeah. how is it possible for all of this DNA which we know is a specific code in there and a specific design in there yeah. How do you think it came about just uh, I randomly? Think, I, I think it got really, really, really lucky. I think it's time. Come on, really seriously? Yeah, Are you yeah, going to yeah. put it down to luck? I think, I think you absolutely can, yeah. I don't think you can have anything randomly existing which is consistent Everything is random. in... Like, uh, in fact, random itself is not random. Yeah, I know. If you ask, if you ask the people who, who, who deal with random, they'll, they'll tell you there are certain sequences in this and hence it's not random. Could you just like, okay, take consciousness for example. I always question, well, how the hell are we conscious? Like, Very good why, question, actually. Very okay. good question. And my first well, what's the answer to that? First answer to me is yeah. we're never going to know. So I don't, and I accept that we're never going to know. No, but you can't say we're never going to know. No, no, no. It doesn't mean I'm not going to continuously talk about it like we are. Yeah. But for me, I would rather, with creation, for example, I accept that as humans, like, we're going to have no idea of knowing. No, but why so do you say there won't be. Just to not know and think and develop forever, but I do, I will never know, and I will never say whether there is or. Is Why would you say you would never know? How would we Unless you know the future, how can you say you will never know? You don't know the future, do you? It is like me saying I've lost a ring. Uh, I will never ever find it. Maybe somebody, somebody who has the device, somebody who has the tools, are able to find it if I'm not able to find it, but for you to make this assertion that you will never find an answer to such a thing is, is kind of problematic in itself because then, you have, because then you're assuming that you know the future. Okay, I wouldn't say that I... Um, I don't know what you meant by we, but I'm assuming human beings, right? I wouldn't say I'm predicting the future. I'm saying that I'm making a wise decision having looked at the history and having looked at the way the world's developed, how there are multiple religions and stories that people... Yeah. Um, love to ascribe themselves you know we have people who uh, 
um, love to think about um, mm. what's it called? Star signs and everything, which I love to think about. But yeah, that's their own narrative and story. No, but hold on. And, and there was, in his People have time, spoken about consciousness. Other religions have spoken about consciousness. In fact, Islam speaks about consciousness. Today, if you go and speak to a psychologist, they will speak to you about consciousness. They'll tell you about emotions and how you actually are impacted by it. So consciousness itself, which we call the nafs, okay, it's quite broad in its understanding, but we do have a lot of information about it. Yes? What do it you can, think for, for example, um, Why are we conscious? For example, how would you define consciousness? I define it as um, an inner, an inner uh, awakeness, an inner, an inner monologue, and an uh, inner aliveness. It's basically just awareness. Sorry. It's it's just awareness. So if awareness. awareness, you know, to be aware of your environment, that's if you're conscious of your environment, hence you're conscious. Uh, that sounds. That sounds like it's a, you're saying it's like a physical thing. Then. No, no, like it is it's, not. It's no, just, no, it's not physical thing. Your consciousness you, is something how, how which we, uh, we, which the scientists have no empirical evidence for. So it cannot be physical. Because if it was physical, they would have by now had the evidence for consciousness. The reason it's called the hard problem of consciousness is because you, I, and all the scientists know that we have consciousness, yet just, they have just, no empirical evidence for it. If just because they don't have empirical evidence now doesn't mean they won't have it in the future. Exactly my point. That's what your no, no, I, I, the, I, I, the lady I, I, was saying yeah, yeah. that we will never know. To make this assertion itself is problematic because you don't have the tools maybe right now. But all I'm saying is that, in fact, there's something called the philosophy of science, which does believe in consciousness, which believes in the metaphysical, yes, which can explain to you things about emotions and so on. Like I said, psychology is one of them. Yeah. But science itself is something which is a study of the naturalistic world, right. which which is beyond the scope of science to understand the metaphysical, like the no, like your consciousness. Going back to that, that point previously, yeah. you're, you're saying it's beyond the point of science yeah, to, to understand metaphysical. Different now. sciences. One is called the philosophy of science. The other is naturalistic science. So even science has different fields. Okay, but that, that the, the philosophy of science part just sounds like. Like what? The, 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 I don't really. It's, it's much more broad than actual science. You know that. Yeah, but. Why is it? Why? How is it science, though? It is science because you cannot separate things like what metaphysical. Is the what is the philosophy of yeah, science? Yeah. For for example, things which are beyond just the naturalistic world, it takes that into account. Your emotions, for example, you cannot you cannot see your emotions but in a lab not, or, or under a microscope and say, okay, this is how you're feeling now. So if I were to ask you, whom do you love more, your pet or your parents? How can you, other other than yourself, how will you prove objectively to anybody else? Your answer. You can't. But that's not really the philosophy of science. It is. Like, you could probably ask the philosopher, ask the psychologist, I mean, I mean, I, and they will be able to tell you, asking you certain questions. If, if, if they could, they could see your like sensory uh, reaction. No, no, to, those to like negative things happening to your parents and your pets. No, no, electro then, then electrochemical impulses have got nothing to do with consciousness or your emotions. A, a person taking drugs can show those signs. To do with that. It's just how the, these are chemical, mechanical things within your body. They, they undergo a certain change depending on certain observations within, uh, at that particular time. Like I said, it can be induced by chemicals. Do you know that? Yeah, but I, th I think that's it's like... It's got nothing to do with consciousness. I think that's like a precursor to consciousness. Though. No, it's not. Okay, that's, that's different. Is, 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 is the operation of your brain right. you, through, through the neurons, which are physical, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. and how they interact at that particular time. It's got nothing to do with consciousness itself. I disagree. Yeah? That's it. And then well, I think, I think they wouldn't call it... Maybe, maybe my friend, they wouldn't call it the heart that's problem. Much better. That, yeah. Yeah, that's getting to the point where... where no, no, that's psychology. That's so the psychologists, they ask you certain questions, and based on that, they deduce the answer that this is, yes, you love your cat more than your mom. See what I mean? So this is through inference, and there's nothing wrong in that. But that doesn't mean that they have evidence of uh, of, uh, that they can observe under a microscope. So it is based on, on inference. See what I mean? Similarly, we can, we can understand where the universe came from based on inference. So if I were to ask you that the universe created itself, would you believe that? Um, or would that even be rational? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Okay, it did exist at one point, and then it created itself. Think it didn't exist? It didn't exist, and it created, it created itself. itself. Is it that rational? No, it doesn't make sense. Thank you. It doesn't make sense that it created itself. Yes. But why? I would be saying, like saying a mother gave birth to herself. 
yeah, yeah. I, yeah? I appreciate Something like that, similar. It's an analogy, I know it's not perfect. So, so taking it back to like what you think a creator is then? Like what okay, is so before we jump to the creator, we need to go through certain inferences and to understand, like the Kalam cosmological argument which you talked about. The first point of that is anything that begins to exist must have a cause. Now we have already eliminated that the cause could be the universe itself. Do you agree? Because the universe didn't exist. It didn't exist in the first place. There's no way it could have caused itself. You answered the question already. Yeah, we've done. I've done this as well. Okay. But you answered the question for me actually, so I'm so glad. <laughs> Let's work for me. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Say that, that we've taken that as a yeah as that a is fact. so that is we've taken, taken care of yeah. now the other possibility where many people say uh, is that can something come from nothing think before you answer can something like you and me like the universe itself can it come from nothing and if you want we can go through what nothing actually means I don't I don't I don't, I don't know what it means but I, I, how do you define absolute nothing like, like, well like um, not even like a void like, yeah there literally is yeah. nothing how would um, you define absolute so nothingness you can't really define it it's not like it's that. very hard okay to... let me rephrase that question does nothing exist no uh, no, no good answer I'm surprised you guys know this mashallah let's work for me like I said <laughs> because many well, times Alhamdulillah, you know many times I have to actually go through a lot of I'm lengthy sure, discussions sure, sure, sure. just to understand, make them understand that nothing doesn't even exist. Yeah, yeah. Because absolute nothingness, I would define it as absence of everything. How is that for philosophical answer? Um, <laughs> absence of absence of everything that you can imagine, that you can think of, that you know. Now that we're here, like nothing doesn't yeah. exist. And it never yeah, so yeah. it doesn't exist. So something that doesn't exist cannot bring about something that does exist. Do you agree? So, uh, something that doesn't even exist, like nothing. Sure, sure. Cannot bring about something that does exist, okay. like you and me. Okay. Yeah? Let alone the universe. Okay, so now we have eliminated two things. The universe cannot create itself. It cannot come from nothing. Now, what is the best alternative you can give me? Because I don't want to use any terms from my thesis perspective and put it in your, in, in your mouth. I want you to, because you guys come from a philosophical background, give me your best shot as to what could be the cause of the universe. Um, Do you study philosophy? Or you... uh, no, I did. I, I, I did at A level. A level? Only a little bit. Only a little okay. bit. Okay. Yourself? Uh, yeah, but I did English as well. Oh, that's good. So Literature not, does not help. Like loads. <laughs> it does help, yeah. Um, Shall we just say something? Let's say, let's say X. Something created the universe. I can take that. Yeah? I can take that something. Okay. Now give, now give. Thing. Yeah, thing. It has to be, it cannot be nothing. So it, it must be, me, it, the opposite it, it of nothing is something, right? Okay, okay. Let's okay. say something. It cannot be nothing. It, it has to be something. It definitely can't be a person. Okay, now you need to ask you what is a person? A human like you. Okay, yeah, it's definitely not a person. Yeah. I agree, I agree. Okay, do you, do you acknowledge it is, it has a will? It has what? A will. A will. To bring something into existence, you need a will. Um, no, I'm not sure about that. No, Why? I, I'm not sure either. How can, how can something that. happen without a will? If you're an agency, in order for you to act, you need a will. To bring about to, to bring about that action into into manifestation, in order to manifest any of your actions, as a being you must have a will. Okay, but we haven't we haven't we haven't um, we haven't established that the thing that well, the something that created the universe was being. Yeah, but that's the reason I'm asking. If it has a will, then by definition it must be a being. No, but for example, yeah, but, uh, like, so let's why, let's understand. Why, why, but does it have to have? When you say will, what yeah. do you mean by will? Like, a, like uh, it's, it's, in order to cause something. It's tried actively to do. No, 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 this. not actively. It, in order to cause something, you must action it. Okay. 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 So if I were to a move leaf, a ball. A leaf flying sure. through the air, it's, that's no will. But yeah. It's still moving. Yeah. I don't. So the cause of that. needs to have will. No, no. The cause of that is the wind. Okay. But there's no will. That, that's fine, but in order, to, so, the, the wind didn't come from just a void, would it? Everything, like I said. There's no will in wind moving. No, no, I know, but so the wind. There can be movement. And do you think the wind? Do you think the? Will. Okay, do you think the wind is self-sufficient, independent, or the wind itself is contingent on something else? The will is contingent. The, the will. The, the will. The will is contingent. Will or the wind. The uh, sorry, 
Okay, the wind. I'm getting confused myself. The wind, the wind. Yes, yes. The wind is contingent on something else. Exactly. It has yeah. to be. No. Yeah, yeah. Remember the first law or the first rule of uh, Kalam cosmology? Anything that exists, yes? Or sorry, anything that begins to exist must have a cause. Okay. The wind began to exist somewhere. Somewhere around the globe, I'm pretty sure. So yes? Doesn't matter which wind you talk about. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> it has a cause. So anything that be, and we have to go through this exercise of what caused it. And you'll come to a conclusion that anything that begins to exist is contingent. So now going back to this, um, the cause of the universe, which is which you call something, yes? Okay, before even we speak about will, let's at least say that it is not contingent. Because if it was contingent, then you'll have an infinite regress where you're going to ask, okay, what caused this? What caused X? What caused Y? What caused Z? So on. See what I mean? And it's a never-ending infinite regress, yeah. which in reality doesn't exist, just like nothing. Logically speaking, you cannot have something going we have on. I've established that. I do. I have accepted that there is. We eliminated the first two yeah. things. So nothing and, and nothing universe and is causing. Itself. Yeah. So and the third thing we can eliminate is infinite regress. And we have eliminated that. Yeah. yeah. There can't be an infinite regress. Yes. Yeah. But um, when so, the well, so, so there's something fine, but you're saying that something needs to have will. Yes. That's what I'm not sure about. Because, like I said, in order to cause something uh, to to come into existence. When it didn't exist at all? No, I was just saying, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, sure, sure. In, but think about it this way, like, if you have all the ingredients, because when we're talking about the universe, we're talking about like a really long time, and, uh, you know, maybe people like to say that, oh, you know, things happen over a long period of time, and it's a mechanism, there's no need for will and all this stuff. If you think about it this way, like, if you had the ingredients of a recipe in a kitchen, mm -hmm. you just had the ingredients there with no willing agent, you left it there for a million years, will the recipe ever be made? So you could have all the right ingredients for a universe, for existing, all these things, right? But if you didn't have an agent a w with a will that willed this yeah. and took all these things and created this. To, to action it. You need something yes. or someone to action it. You need somebody, it. an agent to do this thing. So we, okay. you could tell now that Why this... Why are we saying it's somebody? No, but... It no, no, we are still on something. So surely we're still on something. something. Sorry. Something. Yeah, yeah, we're still on yeah. something. So. In order, look, if anything that has a will, then automatically it is a being. Do you agree? It's, it's, it's a, a being. A being. Yeah. A being. Like a, like it could be a human being, it could okay, be another okay. being. Uh, okay, all this, because you as a human being, you have a will. No, but the, 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 the other example that you use is could you just chuck up a load of letters and it lands into Shakespeare or something like that, right? <laughs> no, 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 not even. That would be magic. Yeah, Where do no, you get that from? No, no, but, but technically that could happen. You could, you no, could but there is still a willing agent. Do you see that? You no, could, do you, you see could. the willing agent though? Like to get throwing the shit, you're still throwing it up. No, but no. yeah, yeah, no. So I, I if you had lead, you still need the raw material. Yeah. I appreciate that, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a being. No, 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 no but, no, it's but still... when you say look, you you can't expect letters to just form a book. This is. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I agree. Saying, that. I agree with that. Saying, that. No, but the being, but the being could be even something. No, not that. Not that. If you were just to have all those letters in pile, once something would have to throw those letters up to land into. Yeah. But do you notice how that thing? Do you notice how that thing has will, has volition? Um, but you could, you could you, have it in order like to a have machine that, that does that. Yeah. So, so even if you want to say that, this is it's some kind of like willing agent. The machine has to be designed. The machine, the machine didn't pop out of existence, does it? No, no, no. So we have to go, whatever example you gave, you have to know, the, go back to the first law, first machine, rule of Kalam cosmology. Like it machine, it be something natural. That, that has, that, that yeah, has, so give that us has this. Designed or made so give us this example. What is this thing? What is this natural thing which can bring about the universe? Go on. I'm waiting. I, I, I first of all, I, I what natural know. thing? I'm not, I'm not making any sort of All I'm saying is that in order so to action it. I'm not making any claim okay, there. So. That's fine. In order for this natural thing to action something, it must have a will. In order to design the universe, in order to create the universe, in order to bring from nothing, from nothing, something, all of this requires someone, which is something, so, someone or something, which is a willing agent. Okay, okay. okay? But so how, if this agent how, how, how is... How we, how we go from something to someone? Yeah, I for, like I said, the will. You have to, you cannot, you cannot divorce the will from this agent now. I, 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 for me, I just can't uh, Show that. me, show me anything that happens without it being caused. Well, it has to be a cause. Yeah, and this no, cause, I, I this causation. That, but, not, but, but lots of things aren't consciously caused. Though. No, but there must be some. Look, anything that begins to exist, like you, you took the example of wind, you haven't shown me 
anything that does not have a cause so far. Everything has a cause. No, 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 I agree, I agree. Okay, so the only thing that does not have a cause is what brought, is, is this necessary thing, if you want to call it, something or some being, whatever you want to call it, this necessary entity, yes, has to bring about the universe, and in order to bring it about from ex into existence, it must have a will. Yeah, just, just yeah. ignore this. Okay. So what I mean? So, so I got distracted a little bit there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. It's, no, 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 speaker's no, 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 corner. We got hackers here. Yeah. Yes. So much, so much. Okay. So, in order for uh, for anything to be caused, sure. you cannot do it without a will in order to action it. Okay. If you only if you want to bring about an action, if you let's say you are a conscious being, and you are bringing something to the world you have your own creation for example or even your own baby you know for example you must have a will to do that yes or or something that brings about it from from it didn't exist to existence okay you cannot do it without being let's say yes no no but you can't just say yes look if something is coming from nothing in order to bring it into existence there must be a will involved you can't you can't divorce it from can you just tell me what you mean by will? Okay, means actively, consciously, bringing it into existence. Um, no, I think I think you're confusing things. Now. So why does this? Which part am I confusing? I, I, confusing. I think I think you're. How would you define will? Um, when you're willing to do something. Yeah, no, I'd say the same thing. I'd say the same yeah, thing. exactly. So why are you but, saying but, I'm confusing? But but, but, but most, but lots of things happen. It's not, there's no like, conscious thought process. Yeah, for, in for everything that, for every example you gave me, I'm yeah. pretty sure it has a cause. <laughs> I mean, uh, but, yeah, but, but here we have gone beyond that. We have gone beyond... A cause doesn't mean will though. No, no, but the cause, look, anything that has a cause, okay, then is either contingent or it, it, it is non-contingent, like this first cause or the uncaused cause, yes? In order for this uncaused cause to cause something, it must have a will. There's no other way around it. You show me why that is incoherent, because what we so far what we talk about is everything in the universe that you give example, it is something which is dependent on something else. Hence, the causation is is contingent, and yeah, yeah, which is a, which is a good thing, you know, as human beings, that is our best tool. If you look, if you want to call. Causation semantics, that's up to you. But it's pretty scientific here. In terms of something which is contingent and something which is not contingent, not dependent on anything, sure, self-sufficient, sure. self-existing, bring has a will, has intelligence, designs everything that you see from the micro to the macro. Okay? It must have a will. Okay, but yeah, and why you still didn't tell me you still didn't tell me why you disagree with it, other than just shaking your head. <laughs> well, no, because I, as I said, Can I, I think, ask a quick random question? Did, yeah. did, did the sun exist before the being? Of course. The sun existed? If the universe yeah, 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 existed, yeah. The, the sun is part yeah, of the course. universe. Yeah. So, so, I thought we went beyond that already. No, no, I'm just like, what, what existed before the being, the, the something existed? No, no. We, so, we are taking it one step at a time. I'm saying the universe itself didn't exist at one point, and everything that you can imagine in the universe, including all the matter, all the energy, all the galaxies, all the suns, yes? All of everything these are contingent. By, all of these... created by... Yeah, all of this is contingent so, on the creator, creator, something if you want to call it, someone if you want to call it, some being or some entity. But we can't, you know how we can't contemplate nothing? Yes. So what happened, what was, what was there, or what existed before that then? Yeah, we can't contemplate, I agree with you. But we can understand the concept, yeah. like you can understand the words. I can't uh, understand no, no, the concept. Uh, well, let's see, so absolute nothingness is the absence of everything. Yeah, we've... So, yeah, if you, if you so if no, you they already... So, we already eliminated that. nothing? That's just, that's just like no, no, no. words that we've used. Like, we, don't no, act, we can't actually... Con we can't actually contemplate Okay, nothing. I'll give you... I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll give you a good... I'll give you a good, a good example. Your ideas have to be put into words. There's these... But yeah, but in I, order to communicate, yeah. that's the only way human beings can communicate. Yeah, but just because we can put it into words doesn't mean... No, it's no, I'll, I'll show you... I'll give you a good example in geometry. In geometry, there's these shapes. Like, I forgot what the word... Like, a thousand shapes 
uh, uh, polygon, I guess. Okay, yeah. um, there's names for these shapes, yeah? We could never conceptualize, uh, we could never think of or imagine them, basically, but we could understand them conceptually. So you can't, um, like, see or vision in your mind what a thousand shape polygon actually looks like because we've never seen anything like five it. dimensions but we could define <laughs> one we could define one and you could understand that this word means okay. thousand shape uh, polygon you don't need to be able to see it to understand it. you know what i mean oh, okay that's oh, fine I'm gonna quickly just yeah sure go on okay, so t okay that that makes sense to me. But then, so say there is this nothing, then... <clears throat> nothing doesn't no, no, exist. No, there, is, there isn't. That's the point. <laughs> no, there is a something. No, but yeah. before the being, that you're saying, before the being created the universe... Yeah, so there there's was, still the there being. There was nothing. No, oh. there was never nothing. So there was always... No, no, wait, wait, wait. There's no, no. always a being. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's what I yes. meant by the necessary... There's always been yes. a being. There, that's why I said a necessary being as opposed to the contingent existence, like the universe, like you and me, everything. So there has to be something always there, someone or some entity always there, which we call the necessary existence, the necessary Why do you being. Why call it someone? Because there was no, there was no because earth I, be, for the someone to be on. Be, because so is this someone, what is this someone, what is it? Yeah, I know, but what is, what is God? You can call, look, energy, uh, to make things no, no. easier, we don't believe in God as a human being. So when we say someone, we're not talking about human beings. So why do we We're attach the being's language to what you believe is God? Because a being That's has a, big problem I have. A, a, a being a being has to be a, have a will in order to do something, to action something. In this case, the universe creating the universe. So it has to be an intelligent the, the, being the, the, the with a will. I don't, I don't necessarily it has, to, it has to be like a conscious, uh, intentional thing. Then. Why not? Why, why does it have to be? Because that... I'm, 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 I'm not making the Can claim I'm not saying it wasn't. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because if there's, if it's not an intentional and conscious uh, cause, if it's a mechanistic, that's the only other alternative. Sure. If it's mechanistic, okay. like you said, with the, with the AI, eternal causes have eternal effects. So what does that mean? So if there is... Um, if there is, for example, if I turn the light switch on, yeah. there's no lag between me turning it on and the light coming on. So, because we know that existence wasn't always here, and we know that there's before, prior to existence, there was this thing, that means the cause is not a mechanistic cause. You see what I'm saying? Because mechanistic causes, there's no lag. If the cause exists, the effect necessarily exists. So if there's a if there's a being, there needs to be a, an effect. There needs to be a universe. Well, we know the universe didn't always exist, and we know for the universe to exist, there must have always been a being. So you see, there's this time you could say where there was a, uh, the being and no universe. That means the cause. That's the problem. I still want to know why do you disagree with so a, a conscious, a, a conscious willing agent, it was an intention agent that it, that yeah. needed to come about because it wasn't it wasn't forced. I just explained like electrical currents on a circuit or anything like that. Like if there was a uh, what's it called if the cause occurs, effect necessarily occurs. That's a mechanistic cause, but an intentional cause. Like I, for example, have the ability to see. But I could, you know, I could delay that, uh, I could delay sight by closing my eyes, but I could intentionally want to see by opening my eyes. See what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not <laughs> okay, just so stick with it. And stick yeah, okay, okay, yeah, keep it simple, bro. <laughs> I'll keep it to the, 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 the electrical uh, example, which is what? on immediately if obviously everything's Can I just working know what you're trying to prove now? i'm just trying to show it because he, he's stuck so on the fact that this agent or this being or this thing has a uh, will or has is an agent it's a volition that's conscious yeah, yeah, he that's is actively right. trying to create it's not some mechanism that's like dead yeah. you know what i mean like a dead I, I still want to know from you guys why do you think this being or this uh this entity say for example cannot be conscious and willing if you know that it, it is going to bring this existence, including the universe, to be created. Why do you think it's not it's not conscious or willing? So for anyone to create anything, they don't, have, don't, must don't have consciousness. He's saying it could have been it's, the other yeah, way. Yeah, but what's the alternative? It cannot be mechanical, because mechanical then you must imply there must be some other matter, some other thing before the universe then, which we have no evidence for. So like mechanistic things require like calibration, require somebody to bring them about, etc. Oh, so they're, yeah, I, I would, they're dependent, like the way they're, they're functioning, they're dependent on something that configures their function. Yeah. That's one issue. Another issue that I'd say to you is the issue that I was talking about before. Mechanistic causes don't have ability to not uh, manifest mm -hmm. their effects. How, how do you know that the being that created the universe was created by a being before that? Oh, good. So, 
if, if that, uh, let's say that this, this is the case, then you wouldn't be talking about the being that uh, that would be the ultimate creator, because anything, because any the thing that is the ultimate creator that everything else relies upon it's like the first cannot. Point. Yes, the first yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it I cannot see, see. because remember the problem of infinite regress. Because okay, if you say the thing that created the universe um, also had something to create, that means we're not talking about God. No, no, we're no, talking I about. Should the ultimate creator still have an infinite? Sorry. Creator. No, because it's uncreated. Let me tell you why. Because, because it is uncreated, a, it's self-sufficient, it's independent. It's only things that have been, that begun, began to exist. Yes. Really before. And the argument is it never began to exist, it always existed. Exactly. Yeah. And even if you strip it away from time, yeah, because some people like to talk about timing issues, like to hit time figure. Let's that, not complicate. I'm not going to get, I'm not going <laughs> to complicate. If you just do this, if you take the sum, the sum aggregate, if you just collect all things that are dependent on other things, like the wind, like the universe, everything within the universe, all that. You just take it as a sum. All that, because it's dependent on something else, that whole set is dependent on something else. And because everything that is dependent is inside that set, it cannot be dependent on something that is dependent also. Why? Because all dependent things are inside that set. You get what so I'm we, we need to count everything you see, the universe, and you cannot say that everything that is outside the universe, Yes, in this case, because we don't know. So we are using inference here. And that's, a re that's how we conclude that there must be a, uh, an entity which brought about all this into existence, but then we have to give that entity attributes because you cannot talk about any entity without attributes. And that's, that's why we say, it. in order for it to create, it must be able to create, the ability to create. It, it must have intelligence. It must have a will. You cannot say it doesn't because then it wouldn't make sense for it to bring about into existence this universe. Okay, so that's the so most plausible this explanation. Argument, it's gone to a point where it's like it really is hard to not agree that there was there is. But as the journey of our argument, okay, we're at a point where it's hard to argue that there's no ultimate creator that's always existed. No, there. Oh, there is. Okay, that's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard not that's to the most plausible explanation. Yeah. yeah. It, it, at the point we're at now. Good. But what I find tricky now then is like, like, what, what, what is, what is that being? Like, what is that? Is what? Because like, like, I, I accept that loads of things can't be explained in our, in our world, in our like. Things are so nuanced and crazy, and sometimes you can't explain things. But some yeah. things we can explain quite well, and even if we're wrong, we're, we'll, you know, science is okay. evolving. Like no, that's, that. So, yeah. but I've never had anyone say an explanation to me of like what scientifically, or not even scientifically, I don't care about science, but like what even is that being? Like, is it energy? Is it what is it? Okay, so are you asking what it is made of? Yeah, that's sorry. What's it made of? Okay. And what does it look now, like? Now, you see. And how does it will? Yeah, Where so does the will come from? In, in, we know will comes from our brain normally. Uh, no? Not really. You, you can be willing. So if you say your heart, for example, okay, uh, okay. could uh, be okay. heart, could Willing be a brain. Comes from all of that, animal, yeah, all, of, all of it goes back to your consciousness. All of this, including your will. Okay? If you're conscious, only then you can willingly do something. Okay. Okay, if you're unconscious on a bed, even if you're willing, I don't know, metaphorically, you still can't do anything. So it, ha it goes back to your consciousness. And then we believe that God, because now I'm using the term God for the first time, in case you didn't notice, because we have come to the conclusion that this being is intelligent, has the ability, has a will, and has the ability to create. Um, at least these three things we know that. And the other thing is it's uncreated, because otherwise it would be contingent. So it is, it is, it is a necessary being in this case. And the necessary being at least has these qualities. These minimal qualities, at least. Now, when we look at the Quran, we know that this being is able to communicate with us. Okay? So it didn't just create us and then say, yes, you know, go about your daily life okay. as you wish. No. It is able, if, if God is able to create, the universe is able to com communicate with us. And this is. Why isn't it easier to communicate with us? Why is it? Sorry, why is it? Why isn't it easier for us? Why is it a question? No, why because is it a question for us. Why are we talking about? It? Okay. Why don't I know who thinks it is? Because the thing, the reason you haven't maybe looked into it, just like you got the Quran today, maybe. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, you you read it, and then you'll be able to answer those existential questions. You know that differs. That's what defines us different from the deist. You 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 studied about deism, right? Yes. So in in deism, the God is just created everything, 
and then that's it. Okay, everything else is mechanical in a way. So you're just I was gonna say something. Yeah. Since you actually believe that you do, you're actually born with that understanding. Okay. So we believe, like as Muslims, we actually do believe that you're born believing in God. So we actually think that the reason you say more clear to me, or why don't I already believe, or why not? We don't think that that's a product of, of God. We think that simply in the Quran it says that your uh, it talks about your natural inclination. We believe in this thing called a fitrah. So your fitrah is your natural uh, predisposition to recognize your creator, to recognize there's a higher power. Obviously, we're not saying people, Muslim, uh, kids from Christian families are born and they're saying, I'm Muslim. No, no, no. There's this inclination inside us. So there's like a longing, like a yearning, like a spirit, like a spiritual fulfillment that we require to connect with our creator. And this is something actually that I, I, they've I, I, done I, I, studies. Really no, yeah, no, 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 no. So that's so what I was just going to tell you. It's okay. actually something that isn't subjective that they've done studies on at Oxford University. Uh, Justin Barrett has a famous study about it. Um, basically, they've done studies on athe uh, children that come from atheistic backgrounds, uh, from countries that are more secular and atheistic. And basically, they've seen that these children, from a young age, they have this natural inclination to recognize there's a divine higher higher power of some sorts. And what's uh, interesting is he also cites the fitrah uh, as, a, as a, a conception that the Muslims believe that human beings are actually born. What do we, what do we really think this is? God who created you, like he created everything else, with a purpose, created you with a purpose and left in you a signature, kind of a way to, like a signature of the creator. It's like a, a longing or yearning for the one who created you. But what happens is what, let me, I just want to, I want to land, I want to land for your point because your point is a good point. Why, like it's a good question. Like why don't we have this? What happens is we're born, and it's also mentioned in the Quran, we, when we're born, we're born on this natural fitrah. And then what happens is our parents, uh, what's called change our beliefs and obviously from beyond our parents our socialization so when we study so in sociology there's primary socialization secondary socialization primary is your family your home and then secondary is when you leave the house you get educated and we're in a country that's secular that really pushes away religion um, that's really hyper capitalistic that's materialistic so it pushes all these things on you and it preps you to be a nine to five worker it doesn't it tells you the things that are worth pursuing in life are things that are mostly hedonistic and things that are that serve the capitalist interest, which is basically being a productive member of the economic part of society. So it doesn't give you value in oh, don't spend time like searching for your purpose or searching for uh, what's called whether God created you or fulfilling these spiritual answers. That has no economic benefit for the for the uh, what's called for the, the system, the capitalist system where we're living in. So it pushes away these things, and you get socialized. And by the way, not just you, all of us, we all get socialized into this. And what happens is. Your fitrah becomes veiled. So we believe the fitrah could be unveiled and veiled and clouded, basically. So when you go through all of this, your fitrah gets veiled. And when you start now looking I into... I have a, a deep uh, yearning of mm. energy within me, which is not really to do with uh, a belief in a higher being. It's to do with like appreciation of like the amazingness of the world mm. and life and and yeah and also i'm not a mm. nine to five person i, I want to like be a mm. traveler it's not mm. really like i'm in within this so you're already breaking away I'm, from your socialization within, in one way i'm within this socialization mm. but i don't I, I i know what you're talking about with this inner inbuilt you know whatever this study is proven, yeah, yeah. proven it's a natural inclination a disposition I, but yeah. i don't i think that that study you can't really like prove it's it not one by the way this people those yeah. all, all those children yeah have been within some kind of socialization themselves. Like yeah, I so, used to write in my diary about mm, the gods. Yeah, yeah, no, so I'll, I'll explain to you. So what they the do, gods. like, generally speaking, like or, in these or studies. Or it could be your inner, we you say, natural disposition, well, which, you, which you didn't realize is actually making you think about. You know, you were asking these questions about and wondering about the nature around you. Actually, that itself is from the fitrah. Because you're asking these existential questions. Where did all this come from? I can this is so just, just one second. I want to yes. to your point about two. So two points. You mentioned a, grat a gratefulness and appreciation, and you mentioned the point about the studies. So these studies are peer reviewed. So I, I don't even want. I don't, I don't want to get into a back and forth about like how how valid these yes, is. Yeah. If they're peer reviewed, they're peer reviewed. Like that's what it is. And it's not one. There's a lot of studies, and, and in fact, um, the the, the no, popular. Sorry, I just want to go back to what did the study try to prove again? It, it's it's showing that generally human beings are born with a natural inclination, a natural yearning, and a natural belief to recognize a, a creator. Like basically, what is the conclusion? And, and this is a lot in the, in the um, psychology of religion. Sorry? You can look into the um, psychology of religion. They have uh, uh, some literature on this stuff. It's basically, actually, atheism is not a, the default position. In fact, it's believing in God. 
atheism is actually an acquired position, they call it in the literature. So why? Because atheism is a positive denial of something that we generally as human beings believe if, if, if is true. If someone was born just on like a desert island, never met yes. another person yes. ever again. Yes, yeah. You, they you, would believe you, in you, a creator. You, yeah. you think, but okay, a creator or God? Yes. Or the no, they would, no, because we believe God is the creator. So it's not... So it's, it's, it's the same so, thing. No, no, yeah, it's the yeah, same yeah, thing yeah, for yeah. us, but not just that. If you look at ancient civilizations. I, I personally don't think one would believe it. Let me tell you how, let me tell you. actually there's a whole range of our arguments in philosophy, ontological arguments, a, a priori arguments, there's also uh, teleological arguments, all would work on an island. What, so ontological argument, you just, uh, what's it called, from a priori principles, before, prior, prior to experience, just through contemplation uh, of concepts and things, you get to a conclusion, a rational conclusion that God exists. Teleological, uh, to, teleological. A priori is pre-experience reasoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, if you're on an island, you could just through the, uh, what's it called, contemplation on just reason, like you try to reason your way to God through contemplation. This is something that philosophers use. Somebody, there's actually thought, like, like what's it called, discussions so about people on islands. Because people on islands get to God. Are you breathing? Are you breathing? Yeah. Yeah, of course, of course. And because look, if you so look at all kinds brother, just one second. If you look at all the ancient civilizations, you will yes. see they worship something or the other. Whether it's stones, whether it's, it's something which is a being which they don't give a, a, a form to, they always gravitate to believe or worship something. Okay? But many times, like you said, you know, the fitra, your natural disposition is clouded, and then you might gravitate towards something which is incorrect, wrong. And it happens through nurture, not through nature, but through nurture, through your family, through your environment, and so on. But then let's go back to what we were talking about, you know, trying to eliminate everything except for this necessary being. Do you do you believe that there is a necessary being which brought about the universe into existence now? Raj, just, just one yeah, just, important, okay, one, just really quick, one yeah, important go point. She mentioned appreciation. So we're trying to show you actually what we're trying to like uh, ask you to like ponder on and accept is actually something you're actually yearning towards closer and closer because what did you say you said i have this appreciation i really want to no no i'll tell you so but, but you know in the islamic conception what we see is we see actually denying the creator is the ultimate form of ingratitude so what you're doing is the opposite actually you're saying i want to appreciate you're looking to appreciate so what you're doing is actually in line of what we're saying to you because what we're telling you is but accept Islam, become a Muslim, which is what, accept your creator and submit to him. This is the ultimate form. Sorry? Oh, let me... Uh, I'll tell you why we say submitting. When we submit, we're saying what? We're saying, you gave us everything. That's why, that's why it's the ultimate form of gratitude. Because we're saying, look, we not, nothing that we have came about from ourselves. You didn't work for your eyes. You got it for free. You didn't get a receipt for your eyes. You don't have to pay for it. When you go to the doctor, doctors do stuff for you, you have to pay for it. You pay through it taxes. I get the NHS here, it's free and stuff. But generally, you're still paying. You're still paying in some sort. You're, you know, you're taking part in society. You're paying in some sort. The point is, you have everything. Your parents, all the blessings you have in your life, this universe that you exist within, everything that you have is from this creator. So you so submit what do you mean by submission? It's basically the will of God and your will is kind of in is, is kind of in sync here because he wants you to know him and to appreciate his creation and that's how you appreciate him so you might not be doing it actively knowingly but indirectly you are still submitting to his will because you he told you to seek him and to search for him by appreciating his creation allah says to look beyond the horizon and within yourself so that you know yes know what Know that he exists. I still don't understand why. Yeah. What's the thing called? The fitra? Sorry. Is that? The fitra. 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 Yeah. Fitra. 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 Yeah. Fitra. 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 Yeah. Fitra. 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 Fitra.
or... their fitrah has become veiled, yes, because of yeah. things they've consumed. For example, somebody who consumed uh, what's it called a lot of uh, what's it called uh, even experiences. Somebody who went through horrible experiences with religious people clouded their fitrah, and then they started doing, for example, very irreligious acts that also clouds your fitrah. Then they consumed a lot of atheistic literature, also clouds your fitrah. So basically, it's a part and parcel with living in a, a multicultural society yeah. where you'll meet people from all walks of life. You also will commit actions. Some of them are good actions that will uncloud your fitrah. Some actions are actually actions that will cloud your fitrah. For example, somebody will tell you, oh, I'm, I don't know why I can't connect or seek with God, but then they do ungodly actions. We believe that ungodly actions, of course, they cloud your fitrah and they cloud. In the same way, you know, the, uh, the concept of numbing your conscience? Like, I, I don't know, like, for example, somebody who's like trying to seek God, but is killing people. Like, you see what I'm saying? So they will have a... But then, what about a more realistic... Like, what, what about a more realistic example? Uh, somebody who's lying all the time. Somebody who's cheating people out of wealth. Somebody who's cheating on their wives. Somebody... Okay. Yeah, any actions that are immoral in the sight of God. And you're doing them, but you're saying you try to seek God. This will cloud... This will numb your conscience. It will numb your fitrah. It will... It will yeah, I think we, get, we probably have... Done an over fit over thing, fitra, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had a, she had a, so, a point about no, why people point, not but, believe. Yeah. So, so basically, you know, earlier when I said God is able to communicate with you, you know, that is something that you need to ponder on. Because if God can create all this universe, then surely He can communicate with us. And the communication, Allah says in the Quran that God sent messengers and prophets to all the nations of the world. So it's not like He has left us uh, unguided. So the guidance for us is that. And that is what we mean. If you read the Quran and you, you ask questions based on that, you come to the understanding that this life of ours has a purpose. You know, like everything that we have, even your clothes, even your necklace, it has a purpose. Why do we as human beings, who are more complex than anything that you see around, not have a, have a purpose? See what I mean? And this is what we need to align ourselves with. What is the reason we are here for? And what will happen to us? You know, one day we're all going to die, whether you believe in God or you don't. Yes, whether you're a strong believer or you're completely the opposite, you know. The question is this, if we die, and we know we're going to die, not if, certainly when we die, yes, the question is... You think we could still live because we don't, we don't know the again? future? You think we could maybe not die because we don't know the future? No, no, no but even in future... No, no, we're all just not around. No, no, yeah, 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 yeah I know, but... Really before, you don't know the future. Yeah, I know, but even scientists, trust me, even if they go future, at best, they are, they are thinking about extending your life not making you eternal, well, no, no, yeah. because I don't think anybody wants to live eternally. No, no, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Okay, so ima here. imagine you die, yes, and then there really is God, and there really is an afterlife, and there really you have to have accountability for everything that you did in this world, yes? Now you tell me, um, who has taken the bigger risk? The ones who have prepared for the afterlife, or the one who says that, Maybe there's a God, maybe there's an afterlife, we don't know, and we'll live our life the way we want. Tell me who's taking the bigger risk. Um, yeah, well, you see what I mean? Oh, I'm happy to take the risk. No, no, I'll tell you why you're not. You this wouldn't. People say, no, I'll tell you why you're not. You haven't thought it through. Okay, last thing, last you thing. Haven't you haven't thought it through, Let me tell you why you're not happy to take the risk. Because what we're asking you to do is an investment, yeah? We're asking you to take a, a reasonable amount of your time in a finite life, to actually investigate what could possibly happen I to you in an infinite afterlife. See the point? So you, you really, as, a, as somebody who's grown up in Western society and stuff, we really care about being happy, I right? I can't wait to like right? come back to life and be like, fuck, No, 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 right. seriously, seriously. <laughs> if you, have, you know, for you taking the risk, it's, it's basically like you saying that I, will, I got a test in a week's time, but then I'm not going to prepare for it. I'll take my chances. But I don't know That's that exactly that. what you're doing. And not just that, you really care about having a happy life, right? In this life. Do you care about having a happy life? Yeah. Okay, so if you care about having a happy life in a finite life, imagine how much real care you have if there's an infinite afterlife. That's a good argument. I'll think about it. So just keep that in mind. Keep it in mind. We're not asking you to do something unreasonable. We're telling you, look, yeah. you really care about happiness in this life, you're going to care a lot more about happiness in an afterlife. And why? You, uh, we're also not, it's not arbitrary that we're telling you look into the Quran. Why? Because, like my brother said, uh, what's called throughout history is demonstrable. We have the stories of many people in the past who came and claimed that they've had a revelation from this creator. You know? Now, you could now try going and assessing every single civilization, but you don't need to do that. All you need to do is assess the per uh, just rationally. The first person you assess is the person that came for you, who claimed to come for you. Jesus said, I've only come for the lost sheep of Israel. Judaism is an ethno religion, you're not Israelites. The only prophet that you could look at historically that said, I've like I've come as a mercy to mankind, 
until the day of judgment is the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and, the, and, the, and he says the final revelation is the Quran. So rationally, this is the first thing you'd investigate. So we're not saying it's arbitrary or oh, just because we're Muslim investigate the Quran. It's like, no, it's like if we were in the time of Jesus, we'd be, we'd be followers of Jesus. We wouldn't be Christians though because Christianity is something that came well after. Jesus wasn't walking around saying he was a Christian. So same with Moses, the term Judaism came after Mo Moses. I think so, one, one way to shortlist, because obviously we don't have the lifetime to go and investigate every religion. So what I normally say is I shortlist the religions which claim to be monotheistic. You know, because if you have more than one God, you'll have problems, you'll have chaos, isn't it? Yeah. Like if, if one God says... Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 